Hey, what's up? It's you, it's me, it's Spooky here. And today, folks, we got an awesome little how-to video for you. Uh, I haven't really been asked this, but I've been asked this in my stream, and a few people don't seem to understand it, so I thought I'd help you guys out. Uh, what we're going to do a how-to today on, folks, is how to breed competitive Pokemon. Now, this is a simple process. Uh, it takes maybe about, depending on what kind, on, like, what kind of setup you want, five to ten minutes to get it ready. Not even that. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need, you're going to need about 250 ovens. Just kidding. But what you are going to really need, which you can't see on here, I should have thought about that part. But yeah, what you're going to first need is two items. You're going to need a Destiny Knot, which you can get either from the NPC, there's an uh, NPC, uh, couple on the Seamaw vial. You can get it from them sometimes. There's another way to get it. I just can't remember offhand. I think you buy it. Oh, you could. I think you could also get it from the uh, Battle Maison too. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure about that one. Just do that real quick just to fix it up. The other thing you're going to need is an Everstone. Now, Everstone you can easily get by using Thief on a Geodude or Rock and Roller. Normally, I think it's a 50% chance to have one on them. Just bring someone with Frisk with you. It'll solve that problem altogether. But, yeah. The reason for these, folks, you probably are wondering, Spook, why do we need these two items specifically? Uh, well, first off, the Everstone. The Everstone allows the nature of the Pokemon that's holding it to be transferred to its offspring. So, let's say we've got an adamant Charizard. Instead of throwing it in there and having it pop out a relaxed Charmander or a timid Charmander or something like that, if we slap this Everstone on it, every single one of those babies will come out adamant. There is no chance it won't come out adamant. Now the Destiny Knot. Now the Destiny Knot, I guess the easiest way to do this would be to also explain a, a certain term. IVs or individual value. An individual value is the hidden potential, I guess you'd say, of a Pokemon. Like, I could pull, I would pull up an accurate, like, description of it, but I don't really think I can do that. I, I'm sure there's a way to do it on, on Bulbapedia, but I'm not going to do that, because we don't need to. Pretty much, it's a hidden value of your Pokemon. It's kind of like what an EV, is, an EV is, which is an effort value, which we'll get into on the How to Competitively Train a Pokemon video. But... There is a big difference. Individual values cannot be changed once the Pokemon is created. They're stuck on them forever, so make sure you get the ones you want. Uh, this also affects what hidden power you have. So remember, if you're going for a certain hidden power, don't try to get all the IVs maxed out. Try to get certain ones maxed out. I think Hidden Ice actually has uh, certain speed EVs and all that. That's why it's so tricky to do them. But... IVs in general have a range of 0 to 31, and normally a parent will pa the parents will pass down 2 to 3 IVs onto the offspring. With the Destiny Dot here, this little, guy, this little ball of string right here, which if you read, an item to be held by Pokemon. If the holder becomes evacuated, the opposing Pokemon will be 2. Pretty much what that does is whenever a Pokemon is a whenever you put it in with a Pokemon that's breeding, normally you would slap this on the Pokemon you don't want the nature on. Uh, this pretty much makes it to where the Pokemon will be a. Ooh, ah. <clears throat> Sorry about that, folks. Like I don't understand. I'm I'm trying to think how to explain it. Pro how to explain it in the simplest terms I can. Pretty much, instead of two to three IVs from me from the parents, it will get five IVs from the parents. It will get five random IVs from each parent. So it could be three from the mom, two from the dad, two from the mom, three from the dad. It could be anything, any kind of random just setup. So pretty much the easiest way to explain it would be it just takes five IVs instead of three, which we're going to need if you want to make sure you have those good IVs on your Pokemon. Now today, my test subjects here for this are two Pokemon that I have already bred before. This is an optional item, by the way, folks. You'll probably see the item pop up on here. This is the third thing you can you would kind of need, but it's optional. It's merely more of a case of you want it because it's simple. 
Uh, the option here, which I can't show you all, because I didn't realize I'm not recording the bottom screen too. Hang on, I, I could fix this. As you could probably see from right here, is a ditto. If you look at the top thing, now this ditto, no, this ditto is special in the fact that it has six perfect IVs. So this way, you're able to take that ditto. And since Ditto can breed with any Pokemon, that's why a lot of people are after it, because it's an easier Pokemon to use. But, anyway, I think it's time I about minimize that. Actually, wait, let me show you the other one. And the other Pokemon I got is a female Pumpkaboo. Now, you may be wondering, Spook, why do you have a female? Like, what's the point? The reason for that is because of... Pretty much it's because of the ball. Because since Jix... Since X and Y, they've changed breeding mechanics slightly in the fact that it made it awesome. They've made it to where the female or the mother of the offspring will pass on the ball that the Pokemon was captured in. So as you can see, this little one right here is in a moon ball, which is actually a, considered a rare ball nowadays because it can only you'd have to get it, you'd have to transfer it over from Harkle Soul Silver with the Pokemon in it. You can't transfer the I the ball itself. Which makes this Punkaboo kind of, it's not illegal because it's been bred like a thousand times, trust me. This baby right here was is like fifth generation offspring from the original one. But uh it, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect anything. It still passes through the scanners just fine. It's not considered hacked. Because it was bred from a hacked mod. It's bred. Even then, the hacked mod didn't have five IVs. It had two, I think. And then I just kept breeding it till we got these six perfect IVs. So, uh, the second thing you would probably need... In fact, we can now minimize this because we don't need this. Oop, let me do that. Now I'll probably just get rid of this. There we go move that out of the way so you guys can't know how to see it is we go over here now this is all easier to do if it's in the battle resort you can do this on with the daycare center uh, next to mobile city but the battle resorts easier because of a simple function that we'll get into in a moment now first things first we gotta make sure our inventory is empty except for one Pokemon and the parents obviously so the parents we're gonna slap the destiny knot on the ditto because the ditto has a nature we don't want. Actually, the ditto, that doesn't matter. Because because this, this is one of those rare instances where <laughs> they both have the same nature. And then we'll slap the Everstone on them. Just to make sure we get that impish nature. So, the way this is going to work is simple. We throw both of these in here. We throw the Punkaboo in. And we throw the uh, ditto in. And for those of you who don't know who are new to Pokemon, Punk of, I mean, uh, Ditto is a Pokemon that can breed with any Pokemon because of its ability to transform. So now we go over here and talk to this wonderful little guy. Your Punkaboo and Ditto are doing just fine. The two seem to get along right. All right. That is perfect. That means they are breed, they're able to breed if the Pokemon are the same gender, if they're, what was it? If they're the same gender, or if they can't breed, they'll say they prefer. They'll say they prefer to play with other Pokemon, something like that. If they're the same gender, same trainer, they'll say, "Oh, they like each other, but not too much." So it's like a one. It's like a smaller chance to breed. It's the lowest chance. And then if it's same Pokemon, two different trainers, it's a high, high chance. I mean, it's a high chance. If this is a fun one, if it's two Pokemon, it's the same Pokemon. It's two different kinds of the same Pokemon. As you can see, we just got an 82, by the way. I'm sorry about that. Uh, if it's two separate Pokemon, one's from a different region, like this Ditto. This Ditto is from Japan. The Punkaboo is from America. They breed even faster. But if the best way to do it is to have a Japanese... Like, an example would be we're using American Punkaboo, Japanese Punkaboo, because that's the fastest. But since I don't have a Japanese Punkaboo, we just go for the Japanese Ditto. Now the reason it's Japanese, I chose Japanese, is, and the reason I'm not just like, oh, why aren't you just using a normal American Ditto, it's because this also doubles for Masa Muda methoding, which we'll do in another video, because I know there's like a million how-tos on this, on this kind of stuff, but I felt like y'all at least deserve the process.
Okay, now you may be wondering why we have the Talonflame on us. The Talonflame is not only transport with the fly, it's also our heater, I guess, our incubator for the eggs, which helps them hatch faster because of its ability, Flame Body. Uh, flame Body and Magma Armor are two abilities that have the number of steps you have to take for eggs. So instead of, let me think, Punkaboo's is 5120 normally, I think. So cut 5120 in half. What is that? Uh, I don't have my calculator set up on my phone yet. I really should have set that up. You know what? We're going to ask Siri. Siri will be able to tell us easily. 5120. Okay. I, I don't know why. I, I forgot to say the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 5120 divided by 2. So it's 2560, and then the next step, which is a fun one, is something I didn't think people would actually people would actually use too much. Uh, for those of you who don't know what it is and don't know what we're doing, we just activated, as you can probably see if you just look at that thing, a hatching power, uh, O power. Now O power, I don't. No, I know aren't super useful for many other stuff besides this. I don't see people like spamming them all the time. It's kind of just like little weird things. I've seen people use the bargaining one and the experience power one too, but that's about it. The hatching power is the hardest one to get. Except in this game, it's actually really easy. That that process I would have showed you if it, if we didn't do it already. It's pretty much uh, you go to mobile and you do the uh, Mr. O power. Uh, the Mr. O power thing it's actually very easy like I know you could probably look up another video on it or if not I could just pull up screenshots and do it from that but what we're doing right now is we're grabbing various uh, as you see they've pumped out more and more eggs every time this little guy right here turns around like you see he's facing away from us when he turns to look at us it means he has an egg in the oven ready to go so we're going to hurry and hatch these two eggs and we're going to show the differences. Because not every one we get is going to come out perfect. Not every one we lose is going to... Like, some of them are going to come out 4 IV, some of them come out 5 IV. But if you're using two 6 IV parents, it comes out 5 IV most of the time. Like, it's a very, very rare occurrence to where it doesn't get those 5 IVs. The 5, IV, certain, five certain IVs. Plus, it's also random. So you also have to consider what... You have to have the right combination of IVs. Like the Punkaboo we're currently hunting for is one with everything but special attack. Because we didn't want a special attacking Punkaboo. Or everything but speed. Because Punkaboo aren't fast to begin with. But while we hatch this egg real quick. There we go. As you can see this egg is now hatching. Uh, you Normally the egg steps vary. Most of the time the default egg step number is... Uh, there he is. Look how cute. Is normally uh, 5,120. Some of them go up higher though. Like I know Ponyards is like 8,600 or something crazy like that. But yeah, we just go grab these six egg, these eggs. Uh, with the Talent Flame, you have a batch of five eggs. So those five eggs, normally they hatch kind of quick, not super fast. By the way, folks, I'm also kind of cheap. I'm trying to keep track on it. So that loud click, I'm sorry, that's just, that's pretty much just our thing. One moment, folks. I'll hurry and hash these eggs for y'all, and then I'll come right back to y'all, so just stay there. All right, and we're back. I'm sorry about that. I was just stuck to get a little snack. <laughs> All right. But no, uh, we just got finished hatching that last egg. So if we take a look real quick. You can see we have five level one Punkaboos. Or you can't see because I forgot that this is a stupid screen. As you can see, we've got five level one Punkaboos. All of them have Frisk except for one which has Pickup. That is because the mother had Frisk as an ability. Which is an interesting thing. I like to think of the mother is passing down its ability no matter what, if it's a normal ability or it's a hidden ability. So a majority will have that. Then you may be wondering where we're going, how, I should be going to talk to this guy first. <clears throat> you may be wondering, folks, Spook, we've got these guys bred, 
How do we know what the IVs are? How do we check the IVs? Well, good thing you asked, little Billy, because I'll tell ya. Okay, as you saw, you saw me run over to this guy right here. You may be one, like, this isn't about a resort only, so this is a good little thing. This is also in Lumia, for X and Y, this whole process is slightly different. The only major difference is the locations. So let's see. I see, I see. This Pokemon has outstanding potential. That means it has up to, it has very high IVs. And then he will tell us what it's maxed out in. So we got HP, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, no speed though. So that was this one, if I'm correct. And I just realized you're probably seeing the cursor in the thing. So let's check all of them real quick. HP, attack, defense, special defense, speed. Another good one. So, uh, what you do with the rejects is up to you. I normally want to trade off all my rejects. And as you saw that, you saw him say that HP is pretty dis dis ah, dismal, you know. That means they have zero in that stat. So they have zero, they have the lowest possible IV, IV they could be born with. Uh, a lot of people will take advantage of that kind of stuff and use it for things like trick rooms or like a trick room team that'll have zero IVs and a lot of stat. But yeah, uh, pretty much that is it. There's nothing else to really show. I'm gonna keep this little guy on the side, right? here and then in our next video we'll get into how to EV train by bringing along these we'll bring along these two uh by the way no we'll do Masamuda method next because Masamuda method is how I got these two so we'll explain that next time so anyway if this video helped you out if you enjoyed this video I would love it if you go hit that like button it shows you appreciate the content and you want to support our little channel and make it grow big and strong and folks, if you want to join Spooktown, if you want to just be a nice, awesome resident of Spooktown, USA, then make sure you go hit that subscribe button too so you can be a part of our little community, our little group of people, our little fandom. <laughs> but no, seriously, uh, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you go hit the like, share, etc., etc., whatever you want to do. And I will see you all in that next video. So... See you folks.